The title of today's lecture is United Nations Peacekeeping, an Essay on Cooperation. United Nations as an international organization was created after the end of the Second World War. It was established to save the succeeding generations from the scourge of war. One of the main purposes of United Nations was to ensure international peace and security. Peacekeeping is one of the effective tools to assist most countries to move from the path of conflict to that of peace. Now, there are several strengths of peacekeeping operations. It has legitimacy. As it is an international body, the peacekeeping operation undertaken always carry greater legitimacy than any unilateral action of a country. It has burden sharing. There is ability to deploy and sustain troops and police from around the globe. And most importantly, it integrates with the civilian force in order to advance multi-dimensional mandates. There are principles behind working of the peacekeeping operations. There are mainly three principles. Number one, the consent of the parties is very necessary. Number two, impartiality in the working of the peacekeeping operations and number three non-use of force except in self-defense and defense of the mandate consent of the parties is very much necessary and it is very necessary that these parties should have commitment to the political process Without the commitment to the political process, the peacekeeping operators will not get the necessary freedom of action. Without the consent of the parties, the peacekeeping operations risks becoming a party to the conflict, may be drawn towards enforcement action, and it will move away from the fundamental role of keeping peace. Impartiality is crucial in proper work of the peacekeeping process. One thing it has to be remembered, impartiality should not be confused with neutrality or inactivity. Just like in a game, a good referee is very impartial, but whenever he or she sees a wrong happening in front of him or her, he or she will point it and will penalize the wrongdoer. Similarly, in peacekeeping operations also, the peacekeepers have to be firm, have to be impartial, but whenever there are wrongs happening, they have to point it out and penalize them. The peacekeepers should not take sides. It is very necessary that the person who is working as a United Nations peacekeeping operation messenger should not compromise the image of impartiality. The moment a person or a peacekeeper becomes partial, it will lead to retaliation. This will lead to the undermining of credibility not only of the peacekeeper but also of the United Nations. Maybe the consent of the parties may be withdrawn if it is found that the peacekeeper is acting partially. Third important principle of peacekeeping is non-use of force except in self-defense and defense of the mandate. Now, United Nations peacekeeping operations, it's not an enforcement tool. It may use force at the tactical level only when Security Council authorizes it. In certain volatile situations, Security Council provides some robust mandates to, and authorizes the United Nations peacekeeping operations to use all necessary means in order to deter 
forceful attempts to disrupt the political process. There are multi-dimensional peacekeeping operations which are taking place, which are aiming at maintaining peace and security, facilitating political process, protecting civilians, assisting in disarmament, demobilization and reintegration of the former combatants, supporting organization of elections, protecting and promoting human rights, and assisting and restoring the rule of law in the conflict-affected areas. Now, in peacekeeping operations, success is not always guaranteed because every time the peacekeeping operations have to face new challenges and the physical and political environment also changes with every operation. In this work, the peacekeeping operation of the United Nations has made a commendable impact. It has won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1988. Peacekeeping is highly dynamic and at every step there are challenges waiting for the military personnel, police personnel and the civilian personnel who are working in difficult foreign terrains. There is a lot of difference between robust peacekeeping and peace enforcement as provided under Chapter 7 of the United Nations Charter. Now, robust peacekeeping means the use of force at the tactical level with the consent of the Security Council. Moreover, the consent of the host nation or the parties to the conflict is necessary. Peace enforcement does not require consent of the parties. It also does not involve use of military force at strategic or international level. In peacekeeping, force is used at the last resort. Because when force is used, it has political implications and it may lead to several unforcing circumstances which may create really difficult situations for the peacekeepers in the long run. Now, use of force has been based on judgments regarding a combination of factors. These factors are mission capability, public perception, humanitarian impact, force protection, safety and security of personnel, and effect of the use of force that will have on the national and the local consent for the mission. In peacekeeping, the mandate of the Security Council is very necessary. Peacekeeping has not been explicitly provided by the UN Charter. It has evolved as one of the main tools of the United Nations to establish peace. Security Council is mainly responsible for developing and establishing peace and security. Peacekeeping operations mainly work according to three chapters. Chapter 6, Chapter 7, and chapter 8. Chapter 6 deals with the pacific settlement of disputes. Traditionally, peacekeeping operations were associated with chapter 6. Security Council, however, need not refer to a specific charter in any resolution regarding peacekeeping operations. Chapter 7 deals with the action with respect to the peace breaches of the peace and acts of aggression. Recent years, Chapter 7 has been invoked by the Security Council for the peacekeeping operations taking place around the globe. It has been found that volatile post-conflict settings are taking place in several peacekeeping operations. Now, the Security Council is taking on this chapter 7 because 
it's a statement of firm resolve reminding the parties and the united nations members regarding the obligations to the security council decisions chapter 8 of the charter provides for involvement of the regional arrangements and agencies in the maintenance of international peace and security in such activities the regional organization should work according to the principles of chapter 1 of the un charter it was in 1948 that UN peacekeeping operations took its birth and it started off in the middle east when military observers were sent in order to monitor the armistice agreement between Israel and its arab neighbors now this operation was called united nations truce supervision organization since 1948 more than 65 operations have taken place under the united nations in it were involved military personnel police personnel civilians from more than 12 countries including india bangladesh here i would like to mention that the peacekeepers from india and bangladesh especially women peacekeepers have been really appreciated in countries of africa where they had gone in order to support the peacekeeping operations happening there are more than 3326 un peacekeepers who have died while serving under the united nations flag the early years when peacekeeping started it was a period of cold war and the cold war had paralyzed the security council peacekeeping was limited to maintaining ceasefires stabilizing situations on ground providing crucial support for political efforts to resolve conflict by peaceful means the military observers may have mainly unarmed or lightly armed the first two peacekeeping operations deployed by the united nations were united nations true supervision organization and united nations military observer group in india and pakistan now the earliest armed peacekeeping operation was the first united nations emergency force which was deployed successfully in 1956 to address the swiss crisis united nations operation in congo which was launched in 1960 was the first large scale mission having more than 20000 military personnel and it has to be remembered here that more than 250 un personnel died in congo including the secretary general dag hammarskjöld nineteen sixties and nineteen seventies this was a period of short term missions and it included dominican republic west new guinea and yemen in nineteen eighty eight nobel peace prize was won by the united nations peacekeeping operations and at that time the nobel committee cited that the peacekeeping forces through the efforts have made contribution towards the realization of one of the fundamental tenets of the united nations thus the world organization has come to play a more central role in the world affairs and has been invested with increased trust now this trust is very important while functioning because if the parties do not have trust on the united nation peacekeeping operations 
functionaries, then peace cannot be established in the long run. With the end of the Cold War, there was this change happening. United Nations shifted and expanded its field operations from traditional missions to multi-dimensional enterprises. Now, these multi-dimensional missions tried to implement peace agreements and tried to provide a foundation for sustainable peace for the warring parties. The nature of the conflicts changed. Earlier, peacekeeping operations dealt with interstate conflicts. Now, more of intra-state conflicts were being dealt by the United Nations peacekeeping operations. Now, the tasks included were complex and tried to monitor human rights, tried to bring in reforms in security, bring in disarmament, demobilization, reintegration of the former combatants. The military remained the backbone of United Nations peacekeeping operations. However, there were many other faces where, which were becoming important. They were including administrators, economists, police officers, legal experts, D-miners, electoral observers, human rights monitors, civil affairs, governance specialists, humanitarian workers, communications and public information experts. The period of 1989 to 1994, this was a period when Cold War was coming to an end and a new consensus, a new common sense of purpose was being found in the United Nations. 20 new operations started in this period of 1989 to 94. The number of people involved with peacekeeping operations increased from 11,000 to more than 75,000. Peacekeeping operations were established in countries like Angola, Cambodia, El Salvador, Mozambique, Namibia. Success in missions led to increase in expectations from the United Nations peacekeeping operations. Now, during the mid-90s, the Security Council failed to provide adequate forces. It failed to authorize sufficiently robust mandates. Where it was found that where the missions were taking place or the peacekeeping operations were going on, guns were still hot. And this was a situation in former Yugoslavia, Rwanda, Somalia. In these three high-profile peacekeeping operations areas, there was lots of criticism going on against the peacekeeping operators. The peacekeeping operators faced situations of warring parties who were not ready to go by the peace agreements. The peacekeepers themselves were not getting adequate resources or political support. So in these three peacekeeping operations, like in United Nations Protection Force, United Nations Assistance Mission for Rwanda, and United Nations operations in Somalia too, civil casualties rose, hostilities continued, and the reputation of the United Nations peacekeeping officers or functionaries suffered. Now, when we go back to the setbacks of early and mid-1990s, we are finding that the Security Council started limiting the number of peacekeeping missions. It was a process of self-reflection. The Security Council tried 
to realize what went wrong, what were the problems and the challenges which needed to be tackled so that the peacekeeping operations could be successful. And we find that the Secretary General took on a very positive role and he commissioned independent inquiry into the actions of the United Nations during the 1994 genocide in Rwanda. At the request of General Assembly, he provided a comprehensive assessment on 1993 to 1995 events in Srebrenica in formal Yugoslavia and examined the circumstances, the situations that had led to the United Nations withdrawal from Somalia. Now, this was a period where we find that the United Nations peacekeepers were actually continuing their positive role in the operations in Middle East, in Asia, and in Cyprus. With the continuous crisis going on in different parts of the world and the demand for more and more peacekeeping operations, the role of the United Nations was reaffirmed. Actually, the peacekeeping operations were working. And in many cases, they were being successful in bringing in long-term peace. The Security Council authorized new United Nations operations in Angola, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, Republic of Macedonia, Guatemala, and Haiti. The Security Council started examining the challenges to peacekeeping operations in a better manner. It started introducing reforms. The aim was to strengthen capacity to effectively manage and sustain field operations. The Security Council was trying in to get a greater understanding of the limits and the potentialities of the peacekeeping operations. Peacekeeping operation is always a complex task and it became more difficult since 1999 when United Nations served as the administrator of Kosovo in former Yugoslavia in the form of United Nations Interim Administration Mission in Kosovo and in East Timor, now Timor-Leste, in the form of United Nations Transitional Administration in East Timor, which was in the process of gaining independence from Indonesia. In the following year, Security Council also started large and complex peacekeeping operations in several parts of Africa. It included Burundi, Chad and Central African Republic, Cote d'Ivoire, Democratic Republic of Congo, Eritrea or Ethiopia, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Sudan and Syria. Peacekeepers returned to resume vital peacekeeping and peace building operations where there was fragile peace because the aim was to have long-term continuous peace and there should be an end to the conflict between the groups, intrastate groups in different parts of the countries of Africa. The first decade of the 21st century saw peacekeeping operations being stretched to its limits and maybe beyond at times. Increasingly, it was being found that the peacekeeping operations had to be conducted in very remote, very uncertain environments where the political surrounding was not at all supportive to the peacekeeping operation functionaries. Challenges were coming in. Challenges were to deliver onto this largest and expensive, nearly complex missions. 
the transition strategies had to be built to prepare for an uncertain future. By May 2010, United Nations peacekeeping operation had more than 1,24,000 military, police and civilian staff. Consolidation had started. Number of peacekeeping operation staffs were reduced. Challenges started coming in, but the peacekeeping operators also started acting in unique manners. There were continuous demand for field missions. Political complexities continued to go on. The most complex operational tasks had to be, de had to be dealt multidimensionally. Peacekeeping operation is dynamic. It is evolving and United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has established a 17-member high-level independent panel on United Nations peace operations in order to make a comprehensive assessment of the state of UN peace operations of the day. In fine, it can be said United Nations peacekeeping operations have been successful. There have been failures, but these failures can be seen as opportunities to learn so that they can serve the world in a better way in the future and establish permanent peace all over the world. Mm -hmm.